Hey, this is Charles from Idio, and in this video I'll be demonstrating our cage brass trombone section. The cage brass uh, library is a massive 22 gigabyte collection and contains about 20,000 effect samples. And the way we divided this library is a little different than the strings and the woodwinds. The brass comes in three separate sections and we'll have three separate videos to demonstrate those. Uh, we have a massive trombone section, a massive horn section, French horns, and then we have a brutally big trumpet section as well. We also designed it slightly different than the strings and the woodwinds. One of the specific things about brass effects is that they often tend to go into a tonal realm. So you have a rip and then the rip would go into a macado or a staccato. So for this library, we did a little different. We recorded a bunch of multi samples on top of the most massive effects collection ever done, but it allows you to do, for example, staccatissimo combined with swells and rips and all that stuff. Uh, let me play you a little example here. So as you can hear, it was both staccatos and macados and macados with swells combined with rips and all that stuff. And of course we have way more. In this video, I'm gonna to try to go through all the core articulations. We have short notes, we have long notes, we have an incredibly large collection of rips and we have a separate collection of falls as well. And then we have a unique collection of bone textures as well. But let me just introduce you a little bit to the interface here before I go into it. I really um, encourage you to watch a lot of the other videos as well, where we go a lot more. We have a technical video where we really go into the details of the interface here. But in essence, we have our mixer page here, which contains nine different microphone positions. We have five different ambient microphones, our mix decker, far, wide, and close. And then we have three separate spot mics for the bones as well. So there's a lot, and I'll try to demonstrate them as well. We also have our options page here where you can choose the velocity curve. If you want to stack the sounds, if you want to stack multiple articulations, you can do that here as well. Um, you can control the sample offset, which is really great for effects. You want to manipulate it more and so forth. And of course you've got the articulation page, which you just saw before as well. And you can load and unload by clicking these guys here. You can also actually adjust the key switching and the key mapping of the samples by using these features here. And if you notice down here, this plutonium symbol symbolizes our cage chaos engine, which is a massive, very, very complicated 80,000 line code script that allows you to do incredible things with the library. And I'll demonstrate that a little bit as well. Um, we also have our specific articulation sequencer here. Um, I really went deep into that in my string video where you can see how you can actually sequence the articulation. So it's sort of a round robin system, but not just for samples, but for articulations. And it's really useful for effects if you want to do more elaborate effects change. Let's say in this case, you want to have the first note, a staccatissimo, then a macado, and then a burning macado. You can sequence it down here. And you can also randomize the sequence if you want to do that. Um, and we have a bunch of slots to do that here. But let me just, um, let's get back to the mix here. Let me just try to demonstrate um, some of the different microphone positions here uh, so you can get a feeling for how versatile the library actually is. So there's really a whole gem hidden collection of different sounds here. Obviously the different microphone positions have very different natures, particularly the spot mics and the close compared to the more wide and far ones. Uh, let me um, just unload these guys here. Let's stay with the wide and the far to have a sort of a big sound. Let's go back here to the articulation sequencer and uh, let's check out the Mikados. I'm gonna try to use our CC1 and CC11 to sort of create a little more expression in them as well. We also got some cool burning macados, which are a little shorter and has a little more swelling to them. And I'm probably skipping through these things a little quickly, but um, there's a lot of things going on with round robin and with lots of layers and all that. But we actually have another brass video uh, where Colin is going much more into the detail of how to use the more lyrical parts of the library here. So let me just skip through here to the next one. We also have a couple of long notes here. We have our power crescendo and power sustains. And we 
We've got some pretty meaty power sustains here as well. Uh, and again, I'm going to try to sculpt them a little bit with the CCs. It's really good biting those. The next category is interesting. One of the notions with Cage is that when Colin and I set out to do it, we wanted to do every single possible effect we could. And obviously rips is a big part of trombone effects. Um, I'll try to go through them in a somewhat fast fashion to give you like a feeling of how many different colors, how much they can actually do. It's not just a whoop kind of sound. There's so many ways they can do it, whether it's more grindy or squealy or high notes or more sort of deeper masculine um, types of phrasing and rips. So um, just check it out here. Let's start out with the atonal rip fall. And as you could hear, it went from the high notes to the low notes. And the way it's organized on the keyboard is that all the lower, darker rips are in the lower keys. And as you move up the key range, you get the higher ones as well. So it's somewhat easy to blend with more traditional samples because the, the intervals are spread in a similar way. Um, let's also try here the rip builder, which I love. Um, it's shorter rips, and you can actually just sculpt them together to make sort of to sculpt the length of your rips. So if you want to do a very elaborate, like blah, 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 you can kind of just blend them together that way. Uh, let me try to show. We also have a category of taunting rips. They're sort of teasing in their sound. And the way we did them is that half of the keyboard is dedicated to sort of up motions and the other one is dedicated to down motions. Let me try to demonstrate here. Let's try this squealer down here. Cam's a squealer. Um, it's sort of a more of a, a comedy type of rip um, where the slide sort of goes down in a sort of teasing, taunting, uh, demoralizing fashion. One of the ways I love to use Cage, as you can hear just in the last couple of notes, is not just use the singular keys, but because we're in a sort of the atonal world, um, you can just mash the keys and generate more wild and more beefy textures that way. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong, like, you know, making the section uh, six times larger it just gives an enormously large rip um, and it'll sit great in an epic mix. Uh, let's try to move down here to the cluster section as well. We have some beautiful, long and elaborate type of clusters. We have short glissando clusters as well. Um, and again, these guys here go up and down in the same fashion as I described earlier on. So we have certain glissandos going up and we have certain cluster glissandos going down. So as you can hear, it gets pretty beefy when you start combining all the notes. Also, take a look at the memory footprint here. It's 21 megabytes, and that was everything loaded here. Granted, I'm only using one microphone position, but I think it's a pretty good indication of the sort of amount of consumption this library actually takes. Um, you can have an enormous amount of effects loaded on a somewhat um, humble rig and still really have the most massive palette of effects at your disposal. Uh, let's try the cluster glitch slow here, a little slower than the previous one. I think let me try this one again here. Um, I'm gonna go into our effects section here. Uh, I'm gonna switch on all the different things I want to be um, affected by uh, the chaos engine as well. And then um, let's see the degrader, maybe put a, now nah, I'm not gonna take the train skin today. Um, here, let's switch both the convolutions on here. And if you watched our previous videos, you'll probably know that this symbol here allows you to sort of do chaotic uh, rendering of the individual effect here. But you can also go out to the main page here and click this one here, which will then randomize everything. And that's where the fun really begins, uh, at least in my opinion. One effect in particular really makes a huge difference, and that's the key control here. Every time you click this symbol here, it'll randomize the tuning and the panning of each single note on the entire keyboard. So that's a kind of a lot. Also, if you notice the symbol here, um, it actually uh, gives you more access to more control. So if you really want to get deep into all the different effects, uh, you can also do that. But uh, let's just see what happens here. I'm going to go out to the main page again here and click the chaos button, and I have no idea what's about to happen.
I think it's the coolest thing in the world because with one click right now, I'm just in a completely different sound universe. Sometimes it works, sometimes it gets so crazy, maybe the filter's too low, you can't hear anything, you just click it again. But within like a couple of clicks, you'll have a completely different texture. And I think it's really important sort of working with the notion of aleatoric composition or random or chance-based music that you allow yourself to be carried away, click on it, see what happens, and perhaps let yourself be inspired or re-render it and take it into another audio program and mangle it even more. Um, but there's a great, great potential here to really go deeper into the source material. And obviously everything is recorded at 96 kilohertz, 24 bit. So the amount of stretching you can do, it's kind of amazing. And all the source material, by the way, I should also mention that is available as WAV files. So if you want to take it into your pulse stretcher or really manipulate the sounds deeply, um, it's all available for you in that way as well. Uh, let me try to move on here to the half note bends here. And let me also show you what's inside the tummy of trolls. All right, let's try that again. Um, this time I'm gonna activate all the effects again here. Let's say we want a filter, EQ, we want the degrader. Let's just do all of it, the transgrader, delay um, here as well. And both the traditional reverb and our transformer convolution has a variety of more effects types convolution as well. You can also do the placement um, of the uh, reverb here as well, of the convolution as well. So you can sort of mimic where you are in the hall and all that. And they'll also be randomized by the way. Um, so let's click on the button here, see what happens. Isn't that wicked? Like the biggest Godzilla spaceship monster attack. It's just, um, I think it's awesome. And I hope really you guys will just mangle this. I, we want to see how far you can push it. Um, I think this is just the beginning of a long journey for us in terms of starting exploring randomization and also the ability to control the randomization. As I mentioned, you can actually go here. We have macro controls as well for adjusting how much you want um, to be impact by the chaos as well and um, we have technical video going much more into that um, but we have a beautiful text section here as well um, let me start out playing you a little bit of the crushing decrescendo here And as I mentioned earlier, I actually like to not play them so much in the singular keys. I like to sort of mash more keys. I think it just gives that really, really hard rocking tone to it. Uh, let me just show you here, like mashing some keys and, and check out how it affects the whole sound. It's funny, one of the questions we've got is that whether we have anything that is tempo synced in this library, and the answer is no. And the reason is that you can essentially just play it at the length you want. If you watch here, because we have so many samples of all the different crescendos here, you can just build it up and just time it to your composition, which is much better than the tempo sync, which tends to be somewhat stiff. Um, so here you can just play it and you'll be set. Let me um, demonstrate the point a little more here by playing the crushing tongue. And uh, let's try to mash some keys as well. Let me try one more thing here. I'm going to pick the star clusters. Uh, the star clusters are a little longer type of clusters. They sort of have a little history or motion in them, if you will, perhaps not. It will be a very dark history, but let me just try here to play um, some random clusters and then um, let me wrap the video up by adding chaos to that as well after I'm done it. And as you may have noticed down here on the keyboard, I'm simply just mashing keys more and more, which sort of helps out building the texture as well. And it's really how I would use it if I had to sculpt the effects. I would sort of layer them depending on how much motion and beefiness you need. 
Uh, let me try to play the same thing here again and uh, let's uh, just add some chaos to it as well. I think the filter sequencer was on here. Let me just uh, double check that. Um, one of the great things about the filter is we can actually sequence the filtering of it as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. This was the cage trombones. We also have two separate videos for the trumpets and horns. And we also have another video where Colin is demonstrating how to use the cage brass multi-samples in a sort of more tonal lyrical context as well. Obviously, I'm in the more dark realm of effects right now. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. This was Troll signing out.